are going to make this cute little, I know, I, I know you can't hardly tell, but it's a candy corn pumpkin. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm just gonna put a coat of white on my canvas because it does have a little debris. These canvases are pre-primed, but I like to always put a quick coat on anyway. Oh, that's gonna even have more debris because that is boogery. That has some dried up oh icky paint in it. So let's, we'll dig that out. Let's get a fresh coat of paint on our canvas. We'll dig out all that disgustingness right there. We'll flick that in the trash. And we'll get this dry really fast and then get started on our pumpkin. I'm gonna wipe this off, hang on. All sorts of problems happening up in here. What was that? So I'm gonna just pull my paint downward. That way I can really tell where like these paint ickies are. There's one there. And this is a fairly new bottle of paint, so I'm not sure why it's being so gross. All right. I just need to toss it and get another bottle. Okay, so real quick before we get started, I'm going to blow dry this with my heat gun. Won't take but about 10 seconds. So let's get that dry. And if you didn't know, uh, we are live. If you're new here, give me some hearts real quick if this is your first, second time to visit. Let me know you're here by um, giving me some hearts. Just hit that heart emoji so I will know how deeply I need to explain myself. Look at there, okay. So I saw a couple of hearts, a couple of new folks. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you, Becky. Um, thank you for coming and hanging out with me for a period of time. I promise we won't take up your whole entire night, but I do appreciate you being here. Um, this canvas is dry now. I just put a coat, a quick coat of white, and now I am going to use my little tracer and this is graphite paper that I just got sticky with resin, I think. I don't know what that was. Yuck. I had a, a, one of my burst packs busted today. One of my burst packs burst and it got everywhere. And so I'm finding little stickies all over the place. Okay, so we have a tracer. I'm trying to find my tape and I do not see it any wear. So I'm going to have to hold this in place. Hang on, let me grab my tape. I can't hold that little bitty piece in place. Carla stole my tape and did not put it back. I'll take the scotch tape. We'll just use some scotch tape. Normally I use painter's tape. Thank you, Georgia. I'm just going to use some scotch tape and I'm going to tape this little tracer kind of exactly where I want it to be. So we're just gonna tape it up right here. And then I'm gonna slide this graphite paper, thank you, Barbara, right under my pumpkin. And I am not going to trace the stem because I'm gonna use this piece of glass for my stem because it's gonna go orange, yellow, white. And so I want my stem to blend into that white at the top of the candy corn. All right, thank you guys for letting your friends know that we are here having a good time without them. Uh, so I'm just gonna use my stylus and I am gonna trace right over my pattern. I'm not pressing too terrible hard because I don't want a lot of the black on my canvas. So we're not tracing that stem, but if you don't have one of these cool 
stems like I do or anything you could use for a stem. I do have this on here if you're in my circle for you guys to utilize. Now, if you're in the shattered circle, you will have access to this tracer to model. And what, oh my goodness, it didn't transfer at all. Did I have it backwards? I had it backwards. Oh my goodness, y'all. Look at there. <laughs> You see, I completely traced that upside down. I do not know how I did that, but I did it. So you want the darkest side to touch your canvas and not do what I just did. So let's try that again. Let's see if that worked this time. It worked perfectly. It works perfectly when you do it correctly. So, and you could just sketch this, a pumpkin is literally just three lines. It is a oval egg shape in your center, and then parentheses connecting the top up and then the bottom. So now, there we have it. There we have our pumpkin. All right, so let me put this away. Put this away. I wish I could see your comments because I feel certain that you guys are laughing at me now. Let's see. Oh, it was backwards. Yes, it was. Hi, everybody. Thanks for the sprinkles. Thanks for letting your friends know we're here. Okay, so now what we're going to use is some more white. I'm just going to go ahead and put some white on my little palette, my little plate. Where'd my face go? Let's see. Okay, hang on. What is happening? Give me a second, guys. My Facebook is acting crazy. Oh, there it goes. Laura, your question just popped up because I just refreshed and I actually have been an artist most of my life, but with that said, I've not always been um, done art for a living. I did do craft shows back in the day when I was younger and I had little babies. And I worked at Fred's Dollar Stores as a, the Vice President over Accounts Receivable. Such a fun job. Not, not, just kidding, not at all. Thank you, Angela. So, I'm gonna put some orange and yellow, whatever orange and yellow you have that kinda resemble candy corn or is what you are gonna wanna use. And I'm using just a half an inch flat brush to apply. Now we're gonna do some blending. So this is gonna go pretty fast because I wanna work wet on wet so that my colors aren't hard lines, okay? I don't want um, there to be like a hard line between the yellow and the orange and the white, right? So we're gonna start with the yellow that is on the bottom and I am going to just paint like the bottom half with the yellow on the entire pumpkin. Make sure I get that done right. So I'm going to paint the bottom half just like that. That air is blowing right on me and drying my paint so fast. All right, so we'll do this section as well, and I'm gonna bring it up a little bit higher on the outside edge. And we'll come around right into our center section. And we'll do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit higher on the right side. I don't know why, just because I feel like it. No rhyme or reason. Just felt like that would be a nice change. Okay, so now we have all three of those sections painted. I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna go in to my orange color 
and I'm gonna hit that top section and I'm not gonna touch I'm gonna leave some space between I got too much water leave some space between my orange and my yellow because we're gonna come back and do some blending Now there's probably a better, easier way to do this, but this is the Cindy way. I don't mean it's the right, always perfect way. It just means it's the way I'm doing it. It's the easiest way for my little brain. Okay. So now that top section is gonna be white. So we're gonna leave that be. I'm going to come back into my yellow and I'm going to hit right along that edge, the top edge of your yellow with some fresh wet paint. Because mine's drying. Then I'm going to go into the orange and I'm going to come in. I'm going to try not to get my hand in all the paints. And I am going to blend these two colors together. All right. Get a little bit of water. So you're gonna blend that orange into that yellow. If you feel like you've got too much orange, just grab, sorry, wrong color, grab a little yellow, pull it back up until it is blended the way you like. Let's get a little orange, come back in. Just so it's a smooth transition between your orange and your yellow. It doesn't even have to be perfectly smooth. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow here. I'm gonna use my rubber finger paint now. I'm gonna come down and on the left side of my center piece, I'm just gonna come down with that orange, just barely touching to all the way to the bottom, all right? So I'm gonna re-wet that again because I took too long. I'm gonna get some orange. We're gonna do it again. Come in and blend down. This orange is not quite as opaque as the yellow, so it's giving me a little bit of a hard time, but that's all right too. Just blend. Let me get some of that off. Get a little yellow. Come back up. And just blend until you like it. There's no right or wrong. Like most things in life, it is. Just do it till you like it. I'm gonna come all the way down around again, barely touching around the edge of that one section. My hands are super shaky today. My finger seems to blend a little better. Y'all learn to finger paint when you're kids. Don't act like you don't know how. All right, we'll do it one more time. We're going to re wet that yellow again. Squish it all together. Then you can use your finger. I'm digging that, man. Bring some of the orange down. Bring some of the yellow up. Touch 
totally loving that. Oh my goodness, that is super cool so far. So far, so good. I wish I could see your comments. Let me try to go out and come back in again. It's the only way I can see anything. Oh. But yeah, my hands are in the colder it gets. It's not cold here. It was a pretty nice day here in the Mid-South. But the colder it gets, the worse my hands are. The worse my hands shake and the more they hurt. So winter is always hard. Now this is just white paint. Okay, who forgot to remind me to plug in my phone? <laughs> eee, sorry. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, my iPad's about to fall off too for some reason. Is that better? Give me some thumbs up if that's better. Yes. Uh, Yeah, yay, awesome. Sorry about that, guys. I was just I was just making pretty. So just blend in. Don't be afraid to use your fingers for blending if it's kind of looking um too harsh. Just get a little bit of white here and then take your finger. Just pull downward. If you do it twice, though, it gets um, a little muddy. I still like that. I am going to add a little bit of white here where I kind of blended that too much. Awesome. I hope it wasn't off too long because I couldn't see the comments until I refreshed. I guess I refreshed at just the right time. And I do have a little drop of orange there. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a wipey and see if I can get that off before it dries. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer real quick. Look, I had orange on my finger and I got it over here. Y'all can tell I'm a little frazzled because of the comment sound issue. It's a little bit annoying. It kind of throws you off your game. I'm gonna get this dry. So I can add a little bit more white to the very top. I don't mind it being a little orangey blendy, but it was a little too much. I do want to see that white. 
the white tip of the candy corn. Any emoji you tap sends up the mean face. Hey, I'm getting comments. Somebody say something. Brenda says now it's freezing. Is that a current comment? I'm sorry it's freezing. Oh, I'm getting comments, y'all. Woohoo! All right, so I think I'm digging that. It's not perfect, but nothing in life is, and it is pretty close to what I imagined. Yes, there is Starfire Jamie. Um, I just haven't um, added it yet. I'll add it as soon as we're done. So here is my candy corn, super cute. I'm gonna hit this with my dryer again and blow dry the whole thing. So we started with the yellow, we blended in really loosely with our orange and then blended in to the white. So I am gonna make sure this is good and dry, then we're gonna add some details. I'm getting comments, y'all. Hey, that is so exciting. Maybe it's fixed. Got a little wet spot right in the middle. This is so cute. I wish I, I almost wish I'd done a different background now, but maybe we'll do another one another day. Okay, so to do our details before we add our glass, I'm gonna use this graphic marker. It is the Hobby Lobby brand called Master's Touch. And candy corn is my favorite candy for the holidays. I don't, I know there's a huge controversy about candy corn. A lot of people hate it. But as a, a sugar addict, I can tell you right now, it is my very favorite candy, right? behind whoppers, which melt in your mouth and make the roof of your mouth raw as all get out. So anywho, <laughs> these are all acrylic craft paints. So I'm gonna use this marker. Again, it's a Master's Touch graphic and the size is 0 0.5. Uh, it's just a real fine tipped marker. And I'm just gonna literally outline very loosely my cute little pumpkin just using very short there we go there went my ipad loose strokes i don't know why that happened so we'll set that up like right here so my ipad just fell off its stand i love candy corn too and yes with peanuts yes yes yeah so, whoppers are the best as well. So, we just really loosely outlined. You can see what a difference that makes. Did it scare you? My iPad crashed down from the little holder and onto my table. So, uh, yeah, it startled me big time as well. So, is this not adorable? Love it so much. Here's what we're going to do, guys. So, what... Here is a piece of glass that was in a box of glass that I got from a blueberry cobbler. Stop distracting me with good candy. Um, I got from a glass blower, okay? You can call the local glass blower in your area and see if they will give you some of the glass that they most often just toss away. And this is just where they cut it off, the little nip of glass they cut off. <laughs> so that would have been even funnier, <laughs> right? Uh, so this is just one of those little nips and we are gonna totally use it as our stem. For me, I think it is perfect because it is white as well. So it blends in with the top of the canvas, the top of the candy corn. It's so much fun. We're gonna let it hang right off that canvas. Thank you, Sherry. It does look good enough to eat, doesn't it? Okay, so what I brought to the table for glass is a couple of things. I brought some Starfire, just a few chunks of Starfire glass. 
but I also brought some vase glass. This was a clear vase from the florist. And I just use my glass nippers to break it and cut it into slivers. All right, so we're gonna use that to uh, add accents to our candy corn. So what I have is some pre-cut and pre-honed, and that means what I did, I'm gonna set this off here for a second. What I did was I, I nipped my shape, which is just an oval, and it, you can see it has a little curve to it because it's the circular part of the glass. So I sanded it down with a honing stone so it wouldn't be sharp and hurt me. So I am going to just add some of this glass, I think, to get my pieces right. I'm gonna add some of this glass to our <laughs> pumpkin. I think that was, well, I don't know what it was. We're gonna add this glass to our pumpkin just to give it a little oomph. Maybe that one, there we go, that's better. I'm trying to figure out how I want it, forgive me. And then we'll go here. And then we'll go here. And then I have a few more pieces we can add in as well. So I'm just kind of gonna add a few pieces until I like it. So they're just the curved little cuts. And then we'll see what happens. We're gonna add some of the other glass as well. We'll add this little baby piece over here. And we'll add a piece here and one last piece here. And then we're going to use some of our star fire on the other side. Really want this to stay within my pumpkin so it doesn't look crazy. So give me a second. To get it straight. I don't want it hanging out the outside. There we are. I think that's good. I love that. Oh, I don't know why it's freezing. Interweb, I guess. All right, so this is the Starfire, the perfectly clear glass. I am gonna dump some in this plate. I don't want a lot, and in this little bag, this is a bag I've been like using for a while, and it's got a lot of great big pieces. I don't want those, so I'm just gonna dig out the smaller pieces, and I'm gonna add a few little nuggets to the right side of my pumpkin. So we're gonna have the vase glass on the left side, and then we'll have the crushed glass, just a few little pieces here and there on the right. And you could do this however you wanted. It doesn't have to be like this. Put your glass wherever your little heart desires. All right, so I wanna bring it up to about here. So I'm gonna keep pulling up some pieces until, until it makes me happy. Lou and G, are y'all up to shenanigans again? Are y'all up to some shenanigans again? I see you two. I see y'all. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. And it's going to look better. I know it kind of looks crazy right now, but it's going to look better when we resin, I promise. But you can see what we've got going on here. I've got the glass nips from my vase glass on the left side, just kind of leaning against each other. And then I have a little bit of the crushed glass on the other side. So I'm going to put this on my block to elevate and I am going to wait until I've resined everything then we'll put this back on the top and make sure it's covered really nicely as well okay so don't let me forget my stem you guys I'll be in trouble we'll have a stemless pumpkin all right I'm gonna get some of this off my fingers before I make a mess again this is so cute do you guys like this so far it is super cute 
Oh, no comments are gone again. I'm gonna have to go out and come back in. Let's see. All right, so now we're ready to resin. Again, your comments are gone. So um, I'll try to come back and come back, in, go out and come back in in just a second. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mix some resin. I'm gonna mix, I think just one fluid ounce. So let me find my cups. My iPad fell, so it's hiding all my things. So, I am going to mark my cup. I have two cups. I'm gonna mark them each at one half ounce. And <clears throat> one half ounce. That way I can see the measurements. And I'm gonna get my gloves on and we're gonna mix some resin. Is Catherine here? I, I can't see comments, but. Ugh. Let me go out and come back in again. Ugh. Yay, hello. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Belle. I see that. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Becky. See those comments. Thank you, Sue. Okay, so we have our cup that has two. I'm going to pull this a little closer. A little closer. We have a cup with a half an ounce, half an ounce. So I am going to take my hardener. Hey, Kelly. G and Lou are having too much fun without us. I'm going to put a half an ounce of resin in my left cup. left and we'll put a half an ounce in the right cup of the hardener so this is a two-part epoxy and so you want equal measurements of the art resin which is what we're using for this art piece so we got come on you can do it there we go half an ounce of each and I'm gonna grab my little measure, my little mixing cup, just this bigger cup, and we are going to transfer both parts into my mixing cup. Make sure you get it all. Don't leave any of that behind. Get it all out. So that your measurement is accurate. And get it all in the cup. And I take a sip because my throat is so dry. And I am going, since this is a bigger cup, I'm gonna use my um, silicone applicator tool to stir. And Sue, I lost comments again. So I'm assuming you are going to time me and I probably won't know if um, it's done. Can you time me for three minutes? Thank you. Um, there is someone here in the studio who can time me, so I'm just gonna go by that. So we're gonna mix this for three minutes. And in just a second, I will refresh my comments and see if I can see what anybody's talking about. I'm gonna move this back up out of my way for a make a mess. And I'm gonna set that there. So we're gonna stir, stir, stir for three minutes to mix all this up really well. I feel like I want this over here. If we can get it 
don't know. I'm going to fuss with that in a minute. So you're going to mix this slowly. Don't beat it to death. The harder you mix, the more bubbles you're incorporating, and those are going to be a little harder to get out. So make sure you're just stirring softly and slowly. Let me refresh comments. Let's see. Let's see. Um, um, I don't know what's being said. Somebody said, don't know, we all use resin. Do we have, do we have a question? I'm gonna tell you this right now. If for some reason your comment got missed, I'm not ignoring you, I promise. Uh, I do not get, I'm not getting comments. Facebook is a little jacked up again today and I cannot see the comments in the thread as I'm going. So, um, if I miss a comment or a question, I promise I will come back and go through the comments when we're done and answer any questions that may have been missed. Okay. Comments are gone again. I'm just seeing people are watching, people are watching, people are watching. I will answer questions after the live is over. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to see them when it's done and it's not just a live issue. I mean, are we almost done? 20 seconds. 20 seconds, yay. So thank you guys. If you're just showing up, we are doing a candy corn pumpkin with glass and resin. And I cannot see comments. Facebook has a comment section messed up on my page for some reason. Okay, my, is my charger not, is my, oh, that's not plugged up at all, is it? Hang on guys, my, say up my uh, phone's not plugged in. Oh, it's not plugged in. Well, that's a problem. I think my fan is hooked up to that. It should be back. If we're back, give me some thumbs up. Yes, we're back and we're plugged in. <laughs> Let me know you can hear me. I'm still seeing no sound, no sound, no sound. I don't want to finish until, I don't want to get started again until the sound is back. It's back. Yay. Thank you, Nadine, for letting me know. So again, we have base glass on the left side. We have a little bit of crushed glass on the right side. And we are going to put this cute little stem at the top of our candy corn. It's white, so it goes right with the theme of the white tip of candy corn. So let's get this party started. I'm going to start with the crushed glass on the right side. We're going to cover all that really nicely. What happens when you drizzle is it hits the very top of the glass and it goes down, it uh, squinches, squeezes, drizzles, drips, whatever you want to call it, down through all your glass bits and it helps to glue your glass to the canvas and it also protects the glass and it protects you from the glass 
because even though it's tempered glass and this is sanded glass, it's still glass and the resin will help cover that glass so it's extra um, soft and won't harm you in any way. So we're gonna drizzle right over the cut vase glass as well. Cover that. And hopefully we'll still be able to see our cute candy corn pumpkin. Let's see. All right, so we're just drizzling over the glass and then once we're done getting this glass covered, I will kind of micromanage the rest of the canvas and make sure everything is nice and covered, especially in between the glass pieces. So I think we're covered on the outside. Let me hit this one more time. And we'll get a little in there between those pieces. We'll put a little there, move it around. I like this silicone brush because it also even uh, it's good for mixing and it's easy to clean. All you gotta do is wipe it off. But it's also good for getting in tight spots, like pushing a little bit of that resin right in under that glass so it makes sure to be covered. So now I can use the rest of my resin just pour it on. I see I got a little debris. I'm gonna get that off. And I can use my tool to spread it around. I'm gonna cover the entire top of my canvas. And I'm very generous with the resin at the top because I wanna set that piece back in. So I'm gonna run my finger around the edge just to kind of build up a dam so it doesn't roll. And before I put my glass on, I am going to use my heat gun to um, pop the bubbles that are right there because I don't know exactly how much resin I'm going to use on my stem. So I'm going to pop these bubbles. Hang on. This is so cute, y'all. And I do have a little piece of debris right there. I'm going to use the um, glass bead mover around her to get that off. All right, so now I'm going to add my stem. So I'm going to take my stem, and it does have a flatter side. And I am going to just oh, lay it in the center section of... <laughs> this is so cute, y'all. The center of my center section of my pumpkin. And I want it to be off a little bit. So I want it to be tilted. And now what I'm going to do is take the rest of my resin. Don't have a bunch. I also have a hair hanging down on my arm. Oh, get off me. And I'm going to drizzle it over the top of my stem so that it kind of rolls off the sides and ensures that my stem is stuck down really nicely. So I want enough resin that it rolls all the way off both sides. Oh, this is so cute. Hang on. I got a little something here too. Oh my goodness, y'all, this is so stinking cute. I know just by looking at the screen that you cannot see the, um, oh, I, got a, I need a little bit of resin in this little crack. You can't see the um, stem as well as I can because it's because of the camera and such, but it is so stinking cute. I'm trying to get a little resin down in this little crevice. Might have to pick that piece of glass up. Hang on. Scoot back over. All right. Let me 
look and see. Yes, it worked. All right, I'm gonna take my gloves off and I'm gonna grab, first I'm gonna get this hair off my arm and I'm gonna grab some seed beads because I can't help myself because everything needs either bubbles or seed beads. We're gonna get the clear. I think I have clear. These are crystal luster, yes. Crystal luster seed beads and guys, if you don't know, these beads are on sale half price at Hobby Lobby right now, okay? These beads called Bead Treasures. Uh, Crystal Luster is the color. They are half price at Hobby Lobby, which makes them $2 a container. And I already bought, if, you're, if you live in my area, I've already bought all the seed beads from Hobby Lobby in my area. Well, not really, not all of them. But I'm gonna add some to the top of my pumpkin on the left side. And then maybe just a few right there. Okay, now I can use Lou. I can use my seed bead mover rounder to make sure my beads are all where I want them and not where I don't. Look at that. All right, let me show you this close up. I'm gonna add a few more right here I like to put them in a little cup they're easier to manage than in the container so I like to put them in this little cup let me wipe this off and let me show you this up close and personal and then I'm gonna show you um, hang on let me see then I'll show you I'll try to show you the depth of it so there is the stem is that not adorable? Can you see that stem? Yes or no? Yeah. And look, there's our seed beads right at the tip top. And then there is our pumpkin. Is that not cute? I have to stand up and look down at it and make sure everything is where I want it. This little piece of glass is trying to be ornery. Let me see if I can't scoot it over a little. There we go. He was trying not to listen. All right, this is so cute, y'all. Oh my goodness. Got a little bit of debris. I'm gonna use my heat gun one more time. I see some bubbles on this side. So I'm gonna use my heat gun and just hit that one more time. Oh, that's too high. Heat those bubbles up. Monica, it takes eight to 12 hours. Um, obviously, I'm seeing comments again. What else could you use as a stem? Uh, Kathy, you could totally just paint the stem, or if you have a beer bottle or something, you could break that and use a piece of glass for the stem. Just make sure you, uh, you know, take that piece of glass. So let's just say it was a beer bottle and it looked the piece of glass that you had look like this. You wanna take that piece of glass outside on the concrete, on the curb, on the brick of your house and just run it, the edge of it. Let's just say this is a brick. You wanna run that glass on the side of the brick to uh, what it does is almost like sanding the sharp edge off of your glass. So that is that. I'm gonna raise the camera up Maybe I can see your comments on the phone. Hang on. Ugh. I'm still upside down. Give me a sec to get right side up. Boom. There we are. Hello. Let's see if I can see comments. Okay. So look at the stem. Can you see that? It is so cute. And you can see how much glass, the depth, the thickness, of the glass that is um, on here. See how, this is the vase glass right here. So you can see how thick it is. And look how the stem is sticking up and kind of off the canvas a little. Is that not the cutest thing ever? 